I'm gonna deal with you in, in two different ways, but ways that you can deal with. You said you're spiritual, but you're very logical as well, right? Yes. All right, so we're gonna deal with logic first so it's easier for everybody to grasp. Come look at this sound real quick, because you said you're Native American, right? This sound right here, I wanna show you something. I wanna show you something. Do you see what's on the bottom? Do you see what's on the bottom of your ancestors' garments right here? These things right here, right? I'm going to show you that in the Bible, where they got that from, because that's a very distinctive garment wear. That's a very distinctive thing that even in all the museums you could go, you could look anywhere the Smithsonian, you see that they have those things on their garments. I'm going to show you where it originated from. Read. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel. So this is way before they were called Native Americans or indigenous. This is prior to them coming to this side, which we can also go into the Bible and prove. Speaking to the children of Israel, read. And be it them, that they make them fringes. Make what? Them fringes. Those are called fringes that, they, that the Native Americans had at the bottom of their garments. Right. The Bible is commanding the children of Israel to wear fringes on the borders of their garments. Have you ever seen any other nation do that? No, right? No, no. So this is very distinct. Read. In the borders of their garments, Come on. throughout their generation. So this is something that they knew to pass down throughout their generation, throughout that bloodline. So when they came to America, where never mankind dwelt, which means that they are indigenous to this land here, because indigenous means you're the first people here. There was nobody in America before the Native Americans. Right. So they took that from Israel to over here. That's why they had fringes on their garment. Right. But we're gonna tell you why they had it on there, read. And that day, put upon the fringe of the border a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So if you go through all Native American history, you see that they used to do things called, uh, they used to have these vegetable offerings that they would do by the moon. A lot, they, was, they lived in booths. We have a Feast of Tabernacles. We have a Feast of Pentecost where they would take their first fruits of their harvest and uh, give it as an offering to their Lord. Where did they get this culture from? They got it from the Bible. So-called Native American culture is Bible culture because they're the same people. But what happened? Jeremiah 17 and 4. Because you said something. You said when the white man came here, he took this land without permission. Did that true? Is that true? Uh, that's, that's, say again? Nah, what you got? He made an agreement, you know what I'm saying? He ain't followed up. Yeah. He made an agreement and he lied. He broke that agreement, right? All of that, now we're going to flip to the spiritual side. All of that was prophesied in our holy book. That was prophesied in our holy book. That's the right. book of the Native Americans is the Bible. Right. The book of the African American is the Bible. Right. The book of the Mexican is the Bible. That's, That's right. where you get your past, present, and future. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself. Hey, bro, this for you too, because you just asked, yo, the unk should not should not be dealing with that. Should not be dealing with the with the with the symbols of the Egyptians. You know why? Because this happened. Read it again. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance. What's your name, bro? Durante, Durante and now. Y'all both have a similar quality. Y'all both have discontinued from your heritage. Right. That's why you call yourself indigenous but can't trace it to the man. Right. That's why you're asking, who do I follow? What's my religion? What's my culture? What's my origin? Because the Bible said what? And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. So, Durante, let me ask you something. 
Like, but, I believe, I believe the black man is God. You're absolutely right. Like, anything that we put our minds to, we can manifest. But also, if we study in the Bible and we believe that the prophecies are true, they will come true. They did come true. You know what I'm saying? The, your, so, uh, your land was taken, that came true. So the Durante power, lost his heritage, that came true. So the, power, All right. the power of us writing something down and mm -hmm. having the masses believe in it can make it manifest. But so the problem is, is like I'm going to tell you the problem is now, because we've had many books many authors, many great orators, but the problem is we've disconnected from our source, which is our God. You got Psalms? Read. Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are God. The Bible says the same thing you just said now. You're a God. Durante, you're a God. But why are the gods in the ghettos? Why are the gods strung out on drugs? Hold on, hold on. Why are the gods are getting arrested by the police and they might be innocent? That's showing you that we have disconnected from our spirituality, which is these scriptures. Read. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And all of you are children of the most high, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man and woman and child, you are the children of the most high God. Right. But, read, but ye shall die like men. But you're gonna live in the ghettos. But you're gonna live in the hood. But you can't get a job. But you're gonna have unemployment. But you're gonna have diseases. But you're gonna get gunned down by your neighbor. Right. Why, what happened? What, what, what took us from being a great empire, a great civilization, having our own land, our own money, our own food, our own resources, to now we gotta ask for everything. And we get the worst of it when we do ask. I have, the, I have the answer. Now, I'm going to tell you straight, you don't have the answer. Do because you're stuck in the same conditions as me. Right. How do you know? Because if you had the answers, you would be ruling this planet by now. Right. Because we're not talking about equality. We're not talking about a sense of enlightenment. No, we're talking about the rulership of this planet. Right. How do you know that I'm still not in the process of achieving that? Uh, because I'm going to tell you why. Give me... Deuteronomy 28, no, that's verse so, 1. That, that comes from the God in you, the intuition to answer the question. I don't need the Bible to answer the question that I'm asking you or you asking me. We asked you what your nationality was, and you said indigenous. That's not a real answer, brother. Okay, my blood, I'm going to just be honest with you. My blood belongs to the water that's here. My blood is attached to the soil that is here. I agree. That's you was a, you were the, Adam was made from the earth. Okay. But guess what? The Bible says, but we will die like men. That's you right. may have a certain uh, sense of enlightenment that Durante doesn't have. So that's why we're, we're connecting all the dots. We're saying the same thing. You are a God. But the reason that you, you, you and all your brothers die like men is because we don't keep the commandments that our God gave us. The reason, the reason I feel is different Breathe. only because of the discipline. I feel like black men have to travel and we have to learn other languages. I like the word you said, though. Discipline. Discipline. And a discipline that we know within ourselves. Every black man here know what they got to do. Hey, that's, sister. That's under no question. I already know Now, nah, real quick. Sister, would you like our men to be more no. disciplined? Yes, right. But under what though? What? Come do them real quick. Couple questions. So let's get the let's get the thing that gets us disciplined. Cause we got brothers disciplined in martial arts. We got brothers disciplined in politics. We got brothers disciplined in selling drugs. They know how to make a flip to the eighth to the quarter. But hold on, hold on, Durante. Read. Let's get the answer. Read. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse one. And it shall come to pass if thou. Will, if, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You can't be spiritual without a, a, a higher power. You need a source. You need a God. The God of the, the, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, the Israelite, gave you this book as your source of your power. You understand? Now, Read. I, I think that's according to different a bloodline. If that's your bloodline, we're talking about the Israelite bloodline. All right. That's right. So like, that's your bloodline. I don't. I don't believe in command and demand. That's what I. That's why I, I don't. Bless I don't know what that means. Hold on. People. Read. I'm, I'm a Buddhist. To observe and to do all His commandments. That's that discipline. You must observe and do all the commandments that our God gave us. Some of the commandments, for example, that would fix our neighborhood. Give me Exodus 22, 16. Bring it up. I'm gonna show you the direct benefits of the disciplines of the laws of our God. 
I appreciate what hey. you're doing. I respect y'all. Exodus. You know what I'm saying? Chapter 22. Verse 16. Listen up, brother. Brooklyn, I'm going to show you something. And if a man entice a maid. Brother, what's your name right here in the flash shirt? Rico. Rico. Rico, what it mean to entice a maid? Trying to holler at a female. My man, what you say, Devontae? Trying to holler at a female. <laughs> holler at a female. Right. This how you know it's talking about the black men. Right. Right. Who holler at more females than us? Nobody. Ain't nobody. Uh -huh. So that's why God had to put a law in place. Read. That is not betrothed. So it says if a man holler at a maid that's not promised to another man, that's a discipline right there that we got to uh, get ourselves together with. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Ain't Trey Songs, Mr. Steal Your Girl? That means he's an undisciplined man. Right. He's dealing with a woman that doesn't belong to him. That's right. Read. And lie with her. So, that man has sex with that woman. How often does that happen in the West End? How often does that happen in, in, in the west side of Atlanta? A man lay with a woman. Yo. You gotta go now. Gotta Read that go. flyer. Check out that flyer, all right, brother? I respect y'all. Y'all keep up the great All right, brother. You an Israelite. You ain't no indigenous. Hey. <laughs> he. Shall surely he shall do what? He shall surely. What surely mean, Rico? Surely, it's a sure thing. It, it's, it's simple and plain, Rico. It's sure. If that man has sex with that woman, he, it is a sure thing that he must do this. Endow her to be his wife. So the Bible says, if a man is to be a disciplined man, if he has sex with a woman. He's going to marry that woman. That's right. That's discipline. Bring it out. That's God behavior. Bring it out. That will stop diseases in our neighborhoods. When or not, it will stop diseases, right? It will stop. Hey, Rico, how many brothers you know got baby mamas? By like plenty. Plenty. What about you, brother? A lot. You got a baby mama? Yeah. Ah, damn. You got two of them. Read it again for my brother right here, man. This apply to you. This is how you behave like a god. This is how you stop being a black man, stop being a Negro, stop being an African American, and start to behave like an Israelite. A prince with the power of God in his blood. Read. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Bring it up. And if a man entice a man. You enticed them baby mamas, didn't you? You got up in the air and you told them what they wanted to hear. <laughs> you did that thing. Yeah, read. That is not betrothed. Did you even check to see if she was dealing with somebody or no? Well, yeah, well, she was, but oh. he, he was in, in, in captivity. Oh, he was locked out? Yeah, and I came in a picture. Just went ahead and swooped in? Yeah. All right. It's cold game. Read. Yeah. And lie with her. Read. He shall surely. If you have respect for that woman, if you honor that woman, if you got respect for your nation of people, what you gonna do? And he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Because you know why you would endow her to be your wife, how you would make that woman whole and holy and righteous? Because how many of our brothers grew up in broken homes? You did, you did, did you? No, I grew up in the house, man. Say again? I said I grew up in the house. You grew up in the house? You had your yeah. mom and dad? Yeah. So what was it like having a father in the house, having that discipline, having that role model? What was that like? Man, my dad used to put, put my ass every day, man. Abuse or was he trying to keep you in line? Hey, make a man out of Make a man out of you. A godly father is gonna make a man, a righteous man, out of his sons. That's right. Because you know who end up raising the, the, the sons if the father not there? The streets. And you know who end up punishing the son if the father don't do it? The white man. Break it out. Break it out man. And you know how he punish him? Yeah. He throw that L on him, that life. Yeah. He throw the book at him. Or he put a bullet in him. Ain't no talk. Ain't no trying to uh, 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 bring the best out of him. Right. No. The streets is going to raise our sons, and guess what? It's a cycle that continues. Bring or if he doesn't get chastised, he's going to do the same thing. He's going he gonna to raise an effeminate boy that was raised by their mama because he wasn't around. Right. How often do we see that in our communities? You don't know if you see that, big homie. 
Man. See what? See, I was raised like that. Go ahead, we go. What you say? I said I was raised with my mom like that, but I, I, I'm not gay, man. No, no, no. But I don't mean effeminate as in you walk with a switch. I mean there are certain things that a man needs to instill in you in order for you to be a righteous, godly man. It Go to Titus 2. I'm going to show you what it takes to be a righteous and godly man according to the Bible. And let's see if your father taught you these things. You know what I want? Read. <laughs> Titus 2, chapter 6. You, don't know. Chapter two, verse one. you want one? Yeah. Verse 1. But speak now the things which become sound doctrine. Sound doctrine isn't a son. So your royal oats, get as many as you can. Or, or, or if he hit you, hit him back and, and don't stop till he dead. Right. If that nigga get you, you gonna go ahead and back and get him. That's not sound doctrine. Bring it out. You work, 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 work until you can't work no more. Work seven days a week, 24 hours a day if you got to. That's not sound doctrine. Bring it out. The Bible is sound doctrine. It and out. it's rightly divided through years and, and thousands of years of proven wisdom right. by right. kings and royalty, men that ruled the earth. Right. Men that ruled the planet wrote down knowledge and information to give to you. Bring right. it out. Read. That the age man. The age man. So that's the older men, your fathers, or your father figures. Read. Be sober. Be what? Be sober. How many of our men are drunks out here? I don't drink, you know? I say you did. I'm just asking. Uh-oh, a little kid sound guilty. I ain't say nothing. I mean, I have a beer every now and then. No, 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 no. I didn't say, I didn't say drink alcohol. I said are drunk. Oh, You see drunks everywhere all the time. They sit right on that bench right there and drink from sun up to sun down. Bring it up. And guess what? You got brothers in our community that walk by they drunk fathers on the benches and just got to keep going. Right. Hey, I see, I see you taking an interest in that image right there. Guess what? In some of these Christian households, the fathers leave that image up. Right. That man raised your, your, uh, the sons in our neighborhood. Bring it up. That, that beast right there tells us, oh, God loves everybody. God don't love everybody. Yes, that beast right there says, uh, come as you are and stay how you are. Right. The God of this Bible is a man of war. Right. He made warriors and kings out of our lineage. But, as the scripture said, now we die like men. Right. We die like dogs in the street. Why? Because we are, we've walked away from our heritage, which are God's laws. Right. Being sober. What else? Grave. Grave. Serious. The black man is not serious. The black man play too much. The black man always got a dance or a joke to tell. Right. He's always entertaining. Right. He's always coloring his hair and wearing his pants below his waist like a clown. Bring it out. The black man is not taken serious by any nation on this planet. Sweet. And we won't be taken serious until we come back to our book, which That's is this Bible. That's this Bible teaches us how to be serious. Right. What you say, bro? Talk to me. Talk. What you say? I was telling them I never color my hair. I mean, I got locks, but I ain't, I ain't going to put no... Why you think the brothers do that today? Because you was like, no, no, no. I grew up with my with my mom in my, in my house, but I didn't grow up effeminate. But a lot of these brothers is dyeing their hair like women. Right. Wearing tight clothes like women. Bring it out. That's the effects of not having a righteous, sober, serious father in the house. Right. Teaching them the rights and wrongs according to God's laws. Read. Temperate, sound in faith. So temperate, you have some sort of self-control with your emotions. A lot of the nigga moments that happen, happen for minuscule reasons. You get your toe stepped on, you get your toe stepped on, guns coming out. A brother call you a name, guns coming out. You got to kill your brother like that's the only result, like that's the only solution. You understand? That's why we can't be taken serious. We can't come together and say, hey, bro, how you dealt with me the other day, I didn't appreciate that. Hey, brother, I see how you said that. My apologies. It never happened again. And you gain your brother back. You know conflict resolution is in the Bible? Bring it out. Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that?
conflict resolution is in the Bible on how to gain your brother and deal with your brother. Right. Let's get it for him. Get Matthew 18. Bring it up. I'm going to show y'all conflict resolution in the scriptures. This is going to help you to be a God. How to help you be a better man. And you got you got sons? Two daughters? This is going to help you raise your daughters correctly. This is going to help you. You got you going to have kids one day? Lord willing? This is going to help you to raise godly sons. What about you, prophet? Well, me, I got three of them. You got three sons? No, I got I got three small ones. Three small ones? Yeah. You got any sons, daughters? No, I got two boys and one girl. This is going to help you to raise righteous and godly sons. How to deal with each other. You know what? Hey. 16. 16. But if he 15. will... Moreover, if... Oh. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if any brother shall trespass against thee. So if you and your brother done got into an altercation, right? right? Or he makes a trespass against you, did something that you didn't like, right? What do we do as men? We, we plot the revenge over here. Right. But that's actually an effeminate trait. Right. That's actually a less than manly trait. Get out. When you just by yourself, I mean. You acting like a little boy. This is how to deal as a man, read. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. The Bible says go and tell that man between y'all two. All right, brother, between y'all two. That's called a man-to-man -man conversation. Right, that's right. And it says alone. Don't come with the whole squad talking to him, yeah, I gotta talk to you. Right. It's over at that point, it's like, nah, what's, what's going on? Well, you know, you know what's gonna happen? Guns coming out. The Bible is teaching conflict resolution as men. This is how to be temperate as an aged man. Read. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If he hear you, you have gained your brother again. It's not a life loss now. Right. It's not a beef now. How, how much lives got to be lost by beef before we realize we can actually talk it out like men? Bring it out. That's the manly thing to do. That's beef right. is for cowards. Beef is for punks. Beef is for little boys. Men deal with each other according to God's word. Like kings. Read. But if he will not hear thee. But say you bring it to him and he don't hear you. Read. Then take with thee one or two more. Then in that in that that in that mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. See, now this is why you must be around godly men right here. Because if you bring two or three liars, now the story just gets confused. Right. Now the story gets miscombobulated. Now you got emotions flaring now because you don't like how this, this guy said that to this guy. This is why you must now surround yourself with godly men. Men that have controlled their spirits, have control of their emotions. Let me get that in uh, Proverbs. Hey, uh, Officer Alicia, uh, uh, a city with no walls, a man that can't rule his spirit. It's Proverbs 20, 25, 28. Proverbs 25, 28. Because I'm going to show you the number one issue in our, in our community. Read. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. The Bible says a man that can't control his emotions, can't control his spirit, is like a city with no protection. Anybody could just get under your skin. Anybody could just flip your buttons. Anybody could just flip your little switches and they like, look, 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 watch this, watch this. You, what you call me? What you call me? Look, 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 now he mad. He mad, he mad. You got no rule over your spirit. You can't let nothing go. You always got to retaliate. You always got to have a, 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 a grudge or a beef settled. Leviticus 18. Is that not an issue in our community? That's because we're acting as African Americans and not Israelites. That's right. We are the Israelites of the Bible. And we. this is the importance of coming back to our heritage. You know, Leviticus 19, 17. You know, um... The Japanese, they got the way they dress, right? They got their kimonos. They got their sushi that they eat. They got their they honor. They got their swords and all that. They got their culture, right? Yeah, right? 
The Bible is our culture. That's right. This is our book. Right. It's yeah. just that everybody has gotten their hands on it. But it's written by you, to you, it out. for you, right. and nobody else. That's right. This is God's undisputed word to the black man. Right. Because we need it the most. That's right. When he made us, he knew he was going to put this volume together and give it to you while you was in Atlanta for you to come back to your God status. Right. He knew he was going to fall low to the, the ranks of an African American. That is nothing. That is trash. Right. You are God's chosen. Right. Read. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Right. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. No, thou shalt not hate that nigga. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. How many of us hate each other? We got brothers killing each other over streets. Right. That they don't even own. Bring it out. Bring it out. Colors that anybody could wear. Right. That's pure hatred. You got the black man selling drugs to the black man. Bring it out. His number one customer. Right. Is his own people. That's hatred. Bring it out. Wait. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Read. Thou shalt, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. This is what I'm doing for y'all. I'm correcting y'all according to God's word. Right. I'm rebuking my brother, my neighbor. Why? Because say Rico get in an argument tonight, Rico might think twice because of the words of God that he heard. Your life might get spared. Your life might get spared because you learn just a little bit of conflict resolution. You learn how to conduct yourself as an Israelite man rather than a black man. That's right. Uh, African American man. You understand? That's right. Read. Thou shalt not, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor uh -huh. and not suffer sin upon him. What is sin? Y'all know? It's an abomination. I like that. It's an abomination, but we need to be more specific. Because that, that that could be vague. Rico might not know what uh, Rico. What's abomination mean? Something that is not right. Something that's not right. Jaywalking not right. Is that a sin? Uh -huh, but hey, wearing your your shoes on the wrong feet that ain't right. But is that a sin? Uh -huh. So we gotta define what sin is, brother. Was any y'all did any y'all grow up in church? Any y'all grew up in the Baptist church, Christian church? You did. Real quick, what is sin? What is the definition of sin? Sin is committing. Might get the mic. You can come close. Hey. Hold it. Thank you. Uh, so they mainly taught us that sin was anything that God had a set of rules that He wanted us to follow, and anything that didn't line up along those rules, mm. it didn't correlate with what He wanted us to do. That is actually very good. Hold on, hold on, don't go nowhere, don't go nowhere. Because can you prove that in the Bible? Because Christianity has a bad habit of just saying things and not going in the Bible and showing you. First John, chapter three, verse four. Come on, get out. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. So the Bible says whoever commits a sin transgresses or breaks the law. So those set of rules are the laws in this Bible. Right. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the literal definition of sin means to break God's laws. Right. That's right. So now you know what sin is. Now you know what sin is. Now you have a sure thing. You got a question? Oh, no. Okay. So what are some of the laws in the Bible that our people break all the time? Infidelity. Infidelity. Okay. That's a good one. What else? What's, what's a sin that our people break all the time? Lust. Lust? Okay. What about you, Rico? Lust. Adultery. Really so wait, wait, wait. What law are you breaking right now? Number 1538. Because that's the problem. If sin is something that should be at the top of our list of things that we should be keeping an eye on. Right. It should be on the top of the list of things that are being brought out in the church every single day. Right. As often as y'all in church, it should be like, okay, these are the laws of God, and here's how not to break them. Right. But is that the is that the sermons that we hear? No, we hear God is good. We got money. It's your season. Bring it out. That's all we hear. But we don't get the correction that we need. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a law that's in the Bible. Read. 
Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel. The so-called black man, Hispanic man, Native American, his real identity is an Israelite. That's right. That's, right. That's his real name. So we are the people of the book. You didn't, did you know that, bro? No, I did not. You didn't know he was the Israelites? Stick not. around because we can prove it. That's right. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.